What's up, what's up everyone? Hope you're doing well tonight. Thank you all for coming in. Thank you all for joining. I really appreciate it. If you don't mind, swipe to the right and share this. Hope you're having an amazing night tonight, everyone. Thank you for all coming in. Thanks for everyone that's going to come in and share this. My name is Matt Crane, creator and founder of The Power of Great brand and we help you recognize that your current situation is not your defining moment built on that definition and tonight's episode of the power of great live stream series we're talking about power of prospecting and how to become a more effective prospector on twitter and this is brought to you about the folks what's up Ern? i hope you're doing well definitely want to give a big shout out to everyone in louisiana right now that is dealing with the flooding Super, 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 super sorry to see that happening again. But I definitely did a Periscope earlier about how you can help and how you can go and, and how you can possibly give back. Um, Nick Ortega, thank you for being here. You definitely won last week, and I wanna, uh, I'll want to i be giving that out to you later this week. My man, Jared SK, I really appreciate it, buddy. Thank you for uh, jumping on, man. Big day for you. Super proud of all the success that you've got going on, man. You're working your tail off, and you're really putting in all the time and effort, and I'm super proud of you, buddy. Thanks for being here. So, once again, the Power of Great live stream series is brought to you by the Power of Great Network and my folks at Rush Impact Marketing. Lucy, how are you, hon? Great to see you. <clears throat> really appreciate each and every one of you for coming in. You are gone, my friend. No time for your crap. Your name says it all because I got no time for that BS. Hopefully you find some Jesus in your life and you figure that out because you ain't coming around me, playa. But anyway, we want to talk tonight on the Power of Great live stream series. We want to talk about how to become a better prospector on Twitter. You know, last week we really had an awesome week. We talked about the power of prospecting on Facebook, Instagram. We talked about how to become a better online prospector as a whole. And tonight, I really wanted to get, right or wrong, I appreciate you, brother. Um, tonight, what I really wanted to get to is Twitter. You know, with all these live stream channels that are sitting out there in social media, people really forget that Twitter's like one of those OGs in social media. You know, like, they're one of the original gangsters of this social media game. And so many people fail to really see the power that it possesses. And where people are really winning on Twitter is business to business and business to consumer help. And what we're going to talk about tonight is what I think are five key ways that you can become a better prospector using Twitter. And so number one, we're going to talk about finding targets. Okay? So number one, finding targets. The first thing you want to do when you start to identify targets is the way that you find your targets is you identify and search for keywords and hashtags that your potential buyers might use. So guys, normally I have a PowerPoint tonight. I've got notes that I'm reading from just so you can see. So if I happen to look down, I just want to let you know that's why. <clears throat> but actually, I'll put them right here in front of me. So finding targets. Identify and search for keywords um, and hashtags that your potential buyers might use. So for instance, if you're in the jewelry game, you might want to put hashtag Jewelry. Felix Anderson, my man, how you doing, buddy? Great to have you here. If you're in health and wellness, you might want to put hashtag fitness. If you're in consulting, you want to put hashtag consulting. You want to have these hashtags pop up because how you do that is those become now keywords. Those become a blueprint or what I like to call your social media fingerprint. So every time somebody searches a hashtag that you have put in, Okay, now you have a fingerprint and you become uniquely identified there. So meaning that if your post gains a lot of traction or if it's very relevant, a lot of visibility is going to get seen to that. So it's very important that you use Twitter in a very strategic way. You want to be very systematic with how you utilize the platform. It's very important. So you want to identify and search for keywords and hashtags that your potential buyers might use. So once again, finding prospects is thinking inside of the prospect. So you want to use the Twitter search to follow anyone that falls inside of what I like to call your, your ideal client profile. So everyone has an ideal client that they like to use. So everyone that's come into this scope, thank you for being here. I appreciate all the shares and all the likes. 
My name is Matt Crane, at I am Matt Crane, across the board on all social media channels. I am the creator and founder of the Power of Great Network. And we simply help people recognize that their current situation is not their defining moment. We do that through a variety of services. And we're talking tonight about how to become a better prospector on Twitter. So we just got, we're, we're talking right now about point number one, finding targets. So you want to use the, the Twitter search and you want to be able to follow anyone that matches your ideal client profile. And it's very important that you have an understanding of, of when you start looking for ideal clients inside of Twitter, that every follow has a reason. There's a systematic way that you want to identify your prospects because what you don't want to have happen is your feeds just get gargled with so much stuff because there could be a lot of ideal clients that are falling inside of all that. And if you're just out here just randomly tapping to follow and you're not putting a lot of thought into it, then what happens is some of those ideal clients might get kicked back down in your feed and you might miss them. So be very, be very cognizant of that. Now, once your following count starts to grow, so once you really start following a lot of accounts that fit inside of that, that realm, right? So once again, Nasmith, we're talking about how to become a better prospector on Twitter. All right? Five key ways to prospecting on Twitter. This is the Power of Great live stream series. This is a complimentary training I do every Monday through Thursday at 9 p.m., and we use it on a variety of topics, whether it's business, sales, social media, motivation, inspiration, business development. And tonight we're really talking about how to become a better prospector on Twitter. So once your following count grows, you're going to need to use the uh, like a Twitter client to organize them in, in kind of a designated list. It's very important. Bonnie, Bonnie Frank, how you doing, hon? Great to see you. Guys, Bonnie Frank's another great person to follow on Twitter. Very intuitive on ways of using Periscope, for instance. She does a lot of Periscope training and a lot of social media training. Very smart lady. Thank you for being here, Bonnie. I appreciate that. So what happens is that once you get all these followers in your database and Twitter, you got to organize them. And you want to use a client organizational tool. And there's tools such as, for instance, um, TweetDeck, for instance. I think TweetDeck is a great is a great tool to use. It allows you to really just better organize your following base. And by categorizing them, now it also helps you do what? It also helps you to identify ways that you're targeting them through tweets. Very, very important here. Okay? So the, the, the last point I'm going to make under point number one of finding targets is you want to do this organically. Look, there's a ton of automated ways that you can go out there and buy followers or purchase leads or all these things. But yet, the best way everybody can do business is to organically build that base. It's very time consuming. It is the most time consuming. Ask Zuri, how you doing? Great to see everybody. Thank you for coming in. Look, it's very time consuming. But it's very important to the overall growth of your follow base, or what I like to call your target base. So how can you organically build that? Well, you want to engage, okay? So make sure you're tweeting them. Make sure you're responding. Make sure you're giving them their just deserves, okay? So organically build that list is vital. So number two, we want to talk about looking for buying indicators, Looking for buying indicators. So as you're monitoring your Twitter feed, you want to do it in a way that um, those that you have, um, those that you're monitoring, right, you're able to identify how you can most help them through your product or your service. So those buying indicators are going to be things such as keywords like anyone recommend or any advice for, or looking for assistance, those are buying indicators. So as you go in there and you start identifying those things, then what you want to do is you want to identify those signals, as I call them, those buying signals. Then you want to engage those tweeters like right away. Because that's what we like to call the beginning of the sales process. See, what they're doing is they're reaching out online and they're throwing their hand up. Hey, I got a question, or I'm looking for help. I need this, I need that. And what you want to do is, because you're being very specific, 
You're learning how to identify prospects. You're targeting prospects. Now you're able to look for buying indicators. What happens? You spot that, what we like to call that a opportunity, okay? You jump in and now you become part of the short list. Remember, social media is fast, it's ever-changing, and it's evolving. So when people put their hands up and they ask for help, it's because they think they think social media is going to instantaneously provide them resources. You want to become part of that short list. So you want to look for those buying indicators. Make sure as you're developing those hashtags, Bonnie Frank put another one up that's great, help or recommend or advice for, looking for, assistance. Those are buying indicators on social media. You want to search those keywords, and when they pop up, now what happens? You revert back to that ICP, and you start to create an engaged relationship. This isn't an opportunity for you to go in right for the kill. Remember how I, why I said this? The signals to engage at the beginning of the sales process. So you want to start learning how to create that relationship. How can you build a relationship online because they threw their hand up and start creating that trust to drive them offline, okay? Very, very important. So number three, in my opinion, this is what Twitter is the best for. In my opinion, point number three is the very, is the very best um, use of Twitter for prospecting. It's for pre-sale research. So you want to do your pre-sale research on Twitter. It's a perfect tool for this because it allows you to keep an eye on your prospective marketplace. By being able to, to look into your per prospective marketplace through hashtags, through certain tweets, through communities and groups, through things that your, protect, your potential targets or your ICPs are sharing or posting, all right, it's very, very important that now what you're able to do is you're able to get a better insight on their challenges, on their goals, and the all-important agenda. So, man, when, when you think about prospecting, most people think that prospecting is all about the go, 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 go. Well, that's true. But Twitter offers you so much invaluable insight through the data, through the way that you can research, that search tool in Twitter is unreal what kind of information you can find. Who's tweeting what? Where they're tweeting it? What they're sharing? What brands they're paying the most attention to? What brands they're the most frustrated with? Like all these things, okay? If you search a hashtag on Twitter and it's in my Periscope bio, will I come up? It really all depends on where you fall within that hashtag. But anything you hashtag based on who shared it, based on who's who's liked it, how it's been researched, but that hashtag is going to be available. So yes, now where you fall as far as the search bar is concerned, it's really going to then be involved on the impressions that your particular hashtag made on the community. Once again, impressions. So when you get on your Twitter account to the right-hand side, you should see an area where it talks about your impressions. Meaning, what hours you peaked, what hours you dropped off, when people are engaging with your post, what kind of impressions you're making. David Dubay, great to see you, buddy. So this is another great tool. Pre-sell research is crucial on Twitter. And there's a tool out there such as Social Mention, for instance. And it really helps you get a good understanding of customers and competitors, what they're saying about one another, um, maybe what their dislikes are with one another. And what this really allows you to do is formulate a solid sales pitch. It's very, very important. So what the research really allows you to do more than anything is figure out how you fit and how your services fit inside of those pain points. And then what happens? Where you can come in and provide your sales pitch. So point number three, you got to do the pre-sale research. Point number four, okay, in my opinion, this is one of the most sought-after ways people are using Twitter now, but so many people are abusing this one. This, this could become the most invaluable tool. It could outrank pre-sale research, in my opinion, if so many people didn't abuse it, but you want to build influencer relationships. 
So many people misunderstand how invaluable it is to build a relationship with an influencer on whatever platform. So when I think about all the platforms, Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and Instagram and all these things, you can share all this through Twitter. But if you're able to identify those key influencers and a tool that you can use to identify the most, the most valuable or key influencers on Twitter is clout. K-L-O-U-T. It's going to help you identify those influential people on Twitter. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to spam them. You really don't want to send so many things to them just to spam them. What you want to do is you want to be alert to their valuable content, and then you want to start sharing, commenting, tweeting. Very important that they see that. And then if you have valuable content that you know falls within their certain expertise, and you want to start trying to gain a little bit more attention, that's when you want to share that particular content with them. Tag them. Now, on the flip side of that, when they give you that attention and when those influencers do reach out to you and provide you with that information and understanding, you want to then come behind that and you want to tweet them back. You want to share it back. You want to appreciate them. You know, a great way to really get behind an influencer from a relationship standpoint is once they share your content, instead of just responding to them originally, Nancy from Florida, how you doing? Instead of just replying to them initially with a comment, pop a 30-second video and thank them. It's personal, it's professional, and it gets their attention because it's now a great way for them to show a success story, for them to show a testimonial. And influencers love testimonials because it really provides them with a layered example of what their brand is all about. But you don't want to spam them. I will tell you, spamming influencers is the number one way to get hacked. And let me tell you, what's up from New York? Great to see you. So what happens is that once you spam an influencer, it's going to be very difficult to ever get back in good graces. Because now you become what? You become needy. They think you're literally just trying to use them or, or leverage them for some reason. So be authentic. Be organic. Be smart about it. But definitely want to build relationships with those influencers. And then finally, number five, you want to build your following. You know, I think too many people are too concerned with how many people they have that follow them, with having these big numbers and, and really look about, all these ways that they can get up there with these folks that have 100,000 followers or 20,000 followers or 50,000 followers. When in reality, what you should be worrying about is that, hey, of all the followers that you have, are those followers that you need to have? Are they engaging with you? Are they providing you valuable content on your Twitter feed? Are you able to receive just as much as you want to give? Are you connected on different channels? Are you guys not, guys and gals not also uh, uh, linked up on Twitter, but are you on Periscope? Are you on Facebook? Are you on Instagram? What kind of conversations are you having? Are they sharing your content? Are you sharing their content? How did they become a follower in the first place? Are you following them back? All these things. So, you know, the, the one thing that I think a lot of people get concerned with is what kind of what does it look like to them if they have a top-heavy following count and a bottom-heavy follower count? Well, there's two ways to look at this. If you're strategically going after followers, then you should have a high follow count because what you're trying to do is you're trying to build a, a social prospect or a social pipeline. So the more people that you can have in your pipeline, the better it is. Now, as you start gaining followers from that, it's all going to be based on how much time and effort you're going to put into that. Once again, I told you in point number one, right, finding targets, it's easy to go out and buy these automated lists. It's easy to go out and buy automated followers. What's hard is to put in the time and effort and the work to prospect them organically. So for number five, build your following. Yeah, yeah, Tanya, I got my, my cats pop in here. You know, if it's not my if it's not my two boys, 
it's my fur kids, and you know, it is what it is, man. I'm just loved by all. But it's very important that that organic and authentic follow base is really your pipeline base. So tonight, it's very simple. How do you become a better prospector on Twitter? These are five keys. Number one, you want to find your targets. How do you find your targets? You identify and search for keywords and hashtags that your potential buyers or clients are using. Number two, you want to look for buying indicators, keywords such as help. Thank you, Bonnie Frank, for that one. Advice, recommend, looking for, assistance. Those are keywords. That's a buying indicator, and that is the beginning of the sales process. Now, at that point, you want to come in, and you want to jump and become part of the short list on solutions. That's another way. Act with speed, but be efficient. Number three, in my opinion, this is the most important way to become a better prospector on Twitter is you want to utilize Twitter for pre-sale research. This is crucial. Twitter is large for pre-sale research because of the search. Hashtags and Twitters. This is going to allow you to gain invaluable insight on what your potential clients, your, your ideal client profile, companies, competitors, all the inner workings of what they have going on. Andrea, how you doing? Good to see you. This is invaluable. So pre-sale research. Number four, you want to build influencer relationships. Probably the most abused way any social media platform is getting used. This term influencer marketing is becoming unreal and people abuse the crap out of it. But if you organically understand the power of building influencer relationships, it could go a long way with helping you become a better prospector on social media, on Twitter. And then finally, number five, is you want to build that following. Very, very important that as you're building your following, you're putting the time and the work and the effort. Organically responding, engaging, creating relationships, not going for the kill shots right out of the gate. Are you able to build enough of a relationship to drive them to other social media platforms? Are you connected on multiple channels of distribution? You're going to hear me say this a lot. Multiple channels of distribution. This is crucial and key to the development of your prospects. Because remember, at this point, the way that you want to utilize Twitter for business opportunities is you want to grow a social media pipeline. Now, so don't get caught thinking that your follow count and your and your follower count need to be neck and neck. If you're really going out and building a prospect base like you should be, then your following count should be a little higher at first. But as you start gaining those invaluable relationships, you're going to see it even, you're going to see it even, and then you're going to see it explode. That's when you know you've got social media referability. Very, very important. So, I appreciate each and every one of you being here tonight. Remember, I keep the replay for these videos up for 24 hours, and then I take them down and will upload the video to YouTube. So if you haven't already, get over to my YouTube channel and subscribe. I drop a lot of video content there. Um, where am I putting up the hashtags in my Twitter status box? So great question, Jiggy Mix. So hashtags are simple. Anywhere that you can provide a hashtag. I always say that in your Twitter bio, you provide a hashtag that is, that is a big-time representation of who you are. So think about Google SEO. The more times people look you up and, and research you, the, the, the higher you get on a, on a SEO stand in Google, and that's the difference between first page and second page. With Twitter, in your Twitter bios, if you put certain hashtags that are viable to your business or your product or your offering, now when people search those, your bio pulls up which gives them an opportunity to do what? Follow you and click into that bio, and that becomes a engaged post. Now, you always want to add hashtags inside your tweets, but you want to make them credible hashtags. So remember that until your business gains a lot of, a lot of longevity, if you're putting hashtags, make it rain, then the th think about this. Think about what that hashtag is synonymous with and where your posts are going. Right? So let's say you put hashtag got my hair done or hashtag um, lost weight. See, think about where those hashtags are going on the social media standpoint. Who's researching them? Who's looking those up? Okay? So what you really want to do is, is you want to think in terms of hashtags on what your consumers or potential prospects are doing. 
So for me, anytime that, that I really want to try to identify potential clients for my business, then I'm going to put hashtags like business development, sales, sales training, marketing, social media management, you know, um, consulting, public speaking, different things based on different posts. Now, the other thing that I will do is I will also make sure that I'm creative with my post. So you want to make sure you're tweeting multiple times throughout the day. You're creating opportunities for um, those posts to be engaged with. But you also want to make sure you've got text post, video post. You want to share. and you, so, so one thing I'm going to say here, and, and, I, and I can't believe I left this out, is um, yes. So creating content is important. But through Twitter, where Twitter can really help you become a better prospector is you want to become an expert content curator, right? Sorry for my southern slang on that one. So you can have you can create content all day long, but on Twitter, to really be a more effective prospector, be a content curator. Curator. <laughs> and what you really want to do is you want to take important content that other people have already shared and just curate it. Share it out. Send it out. Become part of that conversation. Because what happens is now, the big dream, we're great to have you in here, buddy. Because now what happens is you are now part of an expert conversation. And you didn't have to create anything. You basically came in. You organically got involved. You're organically and authentically trying to create a response. And because you went out and shared valuable content from other influencers, okay, remember I said point number four is build influencer relationships, what happens is that they've done all the heavy lifting for you. But you don't want to lose sight of creating content because you still have to have some legs, right? So allow them to be the brains of the operation on some points. And if you don't believe me, take one full day and don't post any of your own content. Curate other people's content and watch how much more engagement it gets right away than the stuff you do yourself. Why is that important? Two things. One, people do get tired of seeing and hearing from you at times. But you have to keep pushing. So the way that you keep pushing is, hey, okay, fine. If maybe I'm overextending a little bit, perfect. But I'm still going to be visible on the platforms. All I'm going to do is take other greats other people that have great messages and great content that jives within what I'm looking for and still fits inside that ideal client profile and I'm going to share it out. So think about this. Whenever you decide you want to take a break from social media, take a break from posting your own stuff but still curate other people's contents. You know, the one thing the Big Dreamer does very well, and this is completely off of Twitter, but for instance on Instagram, he knows people who pay attention to his stuff and that he trusts their decision making and their credibility and he'll tag them inside of his post. It's very important because, man, they'll go in and automatically it creates an automatic engagement. Is sharing viral content on all platforms just as viable? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Sharing valuable content is, there's two big reasons why sharing Valuable content is key. Number one, it's because those influencers that are seeing you share their content or their social media management team sees you share their content. And what you're really doing, in a sense, is you're becoming an affiliate of their content. And then the second thing that it does is that it provides your audience with an opportunity to see you as an influencer because you're able to do what? Leverage the influence of other people. It really shows depth to your character because sometimes while you may not have all the answers, you're still committed to go out and find those answers. You see, once again, remember when I talk about this, what are, what's a true expert and a true guru? The big dreamer, buddy. I love you, buddy. Thanks a lot, man. Let's connect soon, man. I want to chat. Well, we'll be in Vegas. We'll definitely do a live stream together in Vegas. So remember what I talked about with the difference between influencers and gurus and people who really say they are is that an influencer and a guru can always lead you to another influencer and a guru. It's called it, what I like to call the influencer handoff. So don't feel like you always have to be the creator of the content. Just curate it. 
Okay? Very powerful stuff. So I want to thank everybody, Sage. Good to see you. So I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. Once again, my name is Matt Crane at I am Matt Crane across the board on all social media channels. Hit the link in my Periscope bio. That is the link to my exclusive yet complimentary business development inner circle. It's called the Power of Great Inner Circle. We've updated the name. We are truly a Power of Great team where we have individuals from different walks of life, different business backgrounds, different networking, um, different ways of doing things. And what we really do is we want to create a layer of networking, really create an online community that's built on sharing, built on helping all these different things. I find it a challenge to develop great content, of course, because once again, Kimberly, you and I, we, ha we have great content. But right now, we can't compete. Our great content can't compete with all these other influencers who've built 100 and 200,000 followings in, in over 10 to 20 years. I have no doubt about it at all that you put me on the same stage with some of these folks that have 100 and 200,000 followers. I'm covering them because I have that kind of skill set. Yes, I am going to do Pinterest Brook. However, I don't have that pressure. So by curating their content, what I'm able to do is I'm able to leverage that, but still know that I can back it up with content of my own when I need to. So I'm, I'm becoming an effective prospector that way. But once again, I have, to hunt, I, have to, I have to hunt for my own food. So until I have these huge budgets that allow me to hand off all my, all my content creation, I'm the, I'm, you know, I'm the dishwasher, the head cook, the waiter, the, the manager, and all these things. So, you know... Um, so unfortunately, you know, I'm in the trenches and then I'm also trying to, I'm also trying to, trying to, you know, sell, sell the piping too. <clears throat> but look, the power of great ladies and gentlemen, it's built on the definition that your current situation is not your defining moment. So I want you guys to get to the link in my, my Periscope bio, join my exclusive yet complimentary business development inner circle called the power of great inner circle. You can also check me out online, IamMattCrane.com, and see all the different things that the Power of Great Network offers. You can also get over to iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher Radio and research and download, subscribe, leave me a review to the Power of Great Podcast. i got a lot of cool things happening with the podcast. got interviews coming up this week. Really excited about how the podcast is really starting to take it's really, you know, starting to take that flight that I want. But more importantly, you definitely just want to get across the board on all social media channels at I am Matt Crane. I created and founded the Power of Great to truly help each and every one of you recognize that your current situation is not your defining moment. Building an online community is great, but being able to serve that online community through ways like this through opportunities on, on different social media platforms, but being able to hand people off to folks that they need in their life that's going to help them create that infrastructure that's so, so important to the overall functionality of their life and their business and their success is really what it's all about. Kimberly Rose, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Lucy Wright, great to see you as well. Sage, great to see you. M Double J, my man, the big dreamer. Tanya, T Unstoppable, Brooke Maggie B., all the folks that came in, uh, I know I missed some names. I do apologize, but I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for all the times that you show up for me. I definitely try to be committed and always show up for you. But the power of great, recognizing that your current situation is not your defining moment. Success is not measured by what you step out of, rather by what you're committed to step into. And tonight, we've talked about... The power of prospecting on Twitter. Five key ways to become a better and more effective prospector on social media and on Twitter. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about Pinterest. How to more effectively prospect on Pinterest. I'm going to lay down three key ways to become a more effective prospector on Pinterest. And I will see you guys tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here on Periscope. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being here. I truly appreciate it. Bye-bye.